Welcome to Whispers of the Web where the hidden gems of the web come to life. Join us as we unravel the most fascinating tales, secrets, and discussions from across the web. Every whisper has a story. If you enjoy our journey through the Whispers of the Web, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the intrigue. Story number one. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my mother-in-law feed my baby? I have a five-month-old daughter. My mother-in-law has been here easily 30-plus times, and the only thing she wants to help with is either changing my daughter's diaper or bottle-feeding her. We won't let her change our daughter's diaper because the one time she did, we didn't give her permission. She spent way too much time doing so. It really creeped me out. It doesn't take 10 minutes to wipe a baby. It bothered me on a very deep level. My husband was even uncomfortable, so we made a rule. No one changed our daughter but us. But the bottle issue. I strictly breastfeed. I have a pump. I do not use it. I have no reason to use it. She doesn't need to bottle feed my baby, but it really gets her irritated that I refuse. So she came here yesterday afternoon. Just showed up. No call ahead. Nothing. Said she was in the area. I was making dinner. She asks. What are we having? I tell her. I only made enough for us so I'm assuming you are eating whatever is at your place. Because I'm tired of going without my portion because she shows up and eats without even checking if I've eaten or eating my portions out of the fridge because she didn't know it was mine. She says, Wow, okay, and walks off. Says to my husband, Guess there's not enough to feed me. In a passive-aggressive tone. Well, my daughter had been fussing for a good five minutes at this point and my husband was trying to soothe her while I finished up dinner. We alternate nights, my mother-in-law says. Here, I will take the baby while you finish dinner. Claire can go pump real quick so I can get the baby settled. I'm so tired of this argument with her so in the heat of the moment, and being pissed she was here anyways, I slammed the spatula on the counter and said, You're not feeding my kid. I'm not pumping for you. Bring it up one more time and I will be going no contact and you'll have very little to do with your granddaughter's life at all. I then take the baby, pass the spatula to my husband, and walk into the back room and lock myself away. I could hear her arguing with my husband in the kitchen, and then a door slam. Well, my husband came to the bedroom, knocked and said, I kicked her out, and then I hear his footsteps walking away. I come out, and he's angrily finishing dinner, so I just don't say anything. Well, he turns and says, I will have you know that I'm freaking done with this bull crap. I don't want her changing the baby but feeding her? Holy crap, you two act like damn children and I'm sick of being in the middle of it. Is it really that much of a freaking problem to pump so she can feed her one single time so I don't have to freaking hear it? He then aggressively slams my plate down in front of me and storms off to his office and slams the door. He has since apologized and said he's just done with it and says he's going no contact with his mother but his whole attitude has changed. He's distant now. Am I the a-hole? Edit to add, 10 minutes was an exaggeration. It was like 3 minutes and I stepped in because my husband wouldn't. He just told her, It doesn't take that long to change a baby, she's good. And she responded with, Can never be too thorough, we don't want yeast infections. So I stepped in and took my kid. She waited until my husband was helping me out of the shower to do it too so I wasn't even right there to put an end to it. I walked out as she was changing her. And no... I don't plan to pump unless I need to. I currently do not need to. I work from home. So does my husband. When there comes a reason for me to pump, I will. Her wanting to bottle feed my baby isn't reason enough for me. For everyone going off about the diaper issue. No. I'm not calling her a pedophile. No, I'm not claiming sexual abuse. I'm saying she was making me uncomfortable and didn't need to take that damn long. One half of a baby's vagina doesn't take 15 freaking diaper wipes to clean especially when the baby didn't even poop. She was making me uncomfortable so she won't be doing it again, period. This sounds like a mother-in-law issue that your husband needs to be handling. He does not need to be yelling at you for sticking to your boundaries when she pushes them, especially when he initially agrees to those boundaries as well. You are not the a-hole here, and it sounds like it is the right decision to both take time away from your mother-in-law. This could be a good time to have some family or at least couples counseling sessions to ensure you are able to support and create safe spaces for each other. Story number two. 
Am I the a-hole for insisting on a paternity test before accepting my ex-wife's son as my own? I, 32 male, was married to my ex-wife, Jane, 30 female, for five years. Our marriage ended after I discovered she had been cheating on me for about a year with multiple men. She got pregnant and confessed that she doesn't know if the baby was mine or her affair partner's. A couple of months after the divorce I tried to reach out to her to see if the baby was mine but couldn't, and I learned through a friend she and her new partner had left the country. That was two years ago, and I thought that was that. Recently Jane reached out to my mother claiming that her kid is mine and in need of financial help. Jane told my mother that her partner left her when he found out the kid is not his. Now for context my mother has been desperate for grandkids, especially since my older brother is gay and child-free and I've been single since the divorce. She's been relentless in pressuring me to help out Jane. However, I have my doubts given her infidelity. I find it hard to trust her claims without concrete evidence. So I've insisted on a paternity test before committing to any financial or emotional support. If the child is indeed mine, I'll gladly step up and fulfill my responsibilities as a father, but I refuse to do so without proper legal documentation. My mother and Jane are both vehemently against the idea of involving lawyers or going through the legal process. They insist that the child is mine based on similar resemblances, like having blue eyes which I have, but Jane has blue eyes as well. This issue came to a head when my mother posted a picture on Facebook of her and the kid titled My Grandson. Now family members and some friends know about this issue and are contacting me. When I tell them I don't know if the kid is mine and want to do a paternity test they are calling me selfish and irresponsible. My family members are saying my mother will only say that because she is sure that the kid is mine. My friends say I am an a-hole for punishing the kid for what my ex-wife did. There is a chance the kid is mine but I can't shake off my doubts and I refuse to be manipulated into a situation where I might end up responsible for a child who may not be mine. I'm willing to do what's right but I need certainty first. But it's driving me crazy with so many people close to me saying I should just take responsibility. My older brother is the only one who is on my side and he thinks it's because my mother has accepted the kid so others are willing to accept it too, and because of family bonds which are major thing here. But I am standing firm on my decision to do a paternity test. I am a firm believer that a paternity test should be required before child support is offered by the courts, especially if adultery has been involved. You are not the a-hole for wanting a paternity test before taking on such a big responsibility. Her apprehension in obtaining a paternity test is a huge red flag and would absolutely ensure I wasn't going to provide for that child without one. Please do not give in here, get the paternity test. Story number three. Am I the a-hole for not comforting my fiance and telling her that no one took advantage of her when she was crying over being unable to get our cat back? I, 29 male have been with my fiancé, Kate, 28 female, for six years and she just gave birth bringing our daughter into the world two months ago. Before our daughter was born, we had a cat, Spooky, who was eight years old, and we both loved the hell out of him. Kate had got Spooky two years before I entered the picture after she found him as a stray on the street. I never imagined giving him away. But four months into her pregnancy Kate started insisting that we needed to give Spooky up to a shelter because of the harm he poses to the baby. Now to be clear, Spooky has been around babies and toddlers before without any problems, and people made sure their kids didn't provoke him. I was confused by this sudden switch due to how much love she usually showed to Spooky, but now she was actively avoiding him and leaving all of his care up to me. I pressed Kate on why she felt like Spooky might hurt the baby and she admitted that she's had a few nightmares of Spooky biting and or clawing at the baby. That prompted me to go research why she was feeling giving Spooky up was the only way. Because it was not like Kate to make such big decisions based solely on a few bad dreams. And found out that it was most likely her pregnancy hormones making her so afraid of Spooky all of a sudden. I told her what I had found out and suggested we go to a doctor to address it but Kate refused and said it was her instincts as a soon-to-be mom making her do what was right for the baby. She threatened to leave me and not let me see the baby if I tried to stop her from doing it. So I gave in and Kate looked for a good animal shelter within the city before driving off with Spooky and his carrier in the early morning. She didn't let me come with her, and I cried my eyes out while she was gone. 
Fast forward to now, and Kate has been missing Spooky after healing from the birth. Two days ago she said to me that she wanted to see if she could get Spooky back from the shelter, and I was surprised by this, but agreed to drive her to the shelter to see what happened. We left the baby with a trusted friend and went to the shelter in the afternoon. I was doubtful about Spooky still being at the shelter, but Kate said that since Spooky was older, he probably didn't get fostered or adopted right away. My fiancé ended up being completely wrong about that. The woman who met with us at the animal shelter told us that Spooky ended up being adopted by another young couple a few weeks after Kate dropped him off. Kate tried to get the information about the couple from the woman working there, but she said that she couldn't disclose that and just reassured us that Spooky was in a wonderful home. Kate was crying the whole drive back home and only stopped while she fed and changed our daughter before doing it again in our bedroom while the baby was sleeping. I just rubbed her back and held her as she was crying. In the middle of it, Kate started to rant against the animal shelter for taking advantage of a soon-to-be mom, and that they should have realized that she would want Spooky back after she gave birth. This is where I might be the a-hole. What Kate had said rubbed me entirely the wrong way and irritated me. Before I could think about what I was saying, I told her that I warned her that it was just the hormones messing with how she felt about Spooky, and that no one took advantage of her. That made Kate angry with me, so instead of sleeping in our bedroom she's been staying in the guest room that's closest to the baby. She also hasn't been speaking to me unless necessary. I guess she told her best friend what happened because I got a text from her asking me how I could be so cruel to my fiancé and that I was an absolute jerk for saying that. I know a lot of people cannot handle hard truths, and when someone is crying is not the right time to point out a flaw in their logic. It's better to let her grieve and maybe discuss it when she is calmer. However, now that you have shown that you are the a-hole and spoke before thinking of her grief, it's important that you properly apologize. It may be a good time to think of adopting a new cat or kitten to help her cope and move on because a shelter will never give the information up for the couple that adopted Spooky. Thank you for joining us for today's journey through the whispers of the web. Share your thoughts and suggestions for our next adventure. If you're not yet a part of our whispering community, click the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications to never miss out on another story. Join us next time as we uncover another enthralling tale from the web. Until our next whisper.